Hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. And this is episode number 43. And once again, I'm your host, David Burroughs. Thanks for taking the time to stop by and watch the show. Many things uh, to talk about always here on the show. Many exciting things that we're going to share with you. But first, before we do, I just want to remind you a couple of ways of how you can watch the show. Of course, go to my website, www.davidburrows.ws. You'll see the current episodes as well as many of the past episodes and some other things there uh, that you're going to want to check out as well, especially the new mailing list. Be sure to sign up for this mailing list. I won't share your email with anybody, I promise. But it's a good way to win some tickets and free stuff and uh, get some inside scoops before I announce them here on the show. So check out my website, davidburrows.ws. Also, Twitter fans, I'm on there all the time, many times daily. So be sure to follow me on Twitter, should be on the screen there as well, at Dav Burrows. And also, we're very, very proud to be featured on the Cheeky Monkey website, cheekymonkeysarnia.ca. We've got our own blog down there, and Marianne and Roland have set us up and feature the show there every week. So many ways to stay in touch. All right, well, let's jump right into things. I uh, want to show you a very special music video. My friends Kat Vonda, Leo Gray, and Lawrence Panzini Jr. from Everglow. Of course, they were here on the show a couple of times, and we're here in Sarnia back in June at Sarnia Rib Fest 2012. Put on a great performance down there. And finally, they're out with another one of their videos, their latest video called It's You. And I got to tell you, this is a really fun video, which really shows off what Everglow is all about. So take a look at this video, and when we come back, we'll be talking a little bit more about where you can see Everglow. But first, here is Everglow, and it's you. If you love something, set it free. This crazy thing, it's all the same But I can't fight for the two of us Cause all I'm gonna do is lose myself Stand by your man ain't worth it if he's not the one Stand by your man ain't worth it I can't be stuck here forever Living on a cliche A real good man is hard to find
All right, once again, Everglow with their latest video called It's You. It's You, of course, from their most recent album called Rise, and they're working on some other things as well. But check it out online. You can buy it online, uh, the whole album or individual songs at everglowmusic.com. You'll also find a whole lot more about Everglow. You're going to want to follow them online and on Twitter, and, well, you know how it works. Once again, I want to say thank you to Kat, Leo, and Lawrence for allowing me to share that here with you, and all the best to them. In fact, if you want a chance to see them, they're coming down to Grand Bend this long weekend friday saturday and sunday they will be at gables inn in the famous gren bend to uh, kick off the final part of the summer if you will so we might get a chance to get down there so cat leo and lawrence keep an eye out for me i just might surprise you so once again everglow congratulations on your latest video and we're looking forward to seeing you again all right well, we're going to take a quick break uh, there's many things happening so we're going to show it to you right now this is your cheeky monkey weekend update take a look at this and then we'll be back with more Cheeky Monkey, the greatest TV store. Cheeky Monkey, movies and more. Cheeky Monkey, the greatest TV store in town. Cheeky Monkey, the greatest TV store in town. All right, there you have it, your Cheeky Monkey weekend update. Of course, head down to CheekyMonkeyStarringYou.ca to find out uh, everything. It's a lot of things that are happening around there. Marianne and Roland keep it updated quite frequently, so check that out. And thank you, Cheeky Monkey, for being one of our sponsors here on the show. All right, let's move along to what we did the past couple of days. We were down at the new Jack Doyle's Irish Pub and Grill and in the new Metro Room that they have in there as well. And there's a film, part of a film, that was being recorded and videotaped in there on Tuesday, this past Tuesday. August the 28th and there was a bunch of people down there playing extras and I was one of the extras and had a couple of cameos in there as well. Mark McNabb from Skylight Films and Kelly Ray Irwin were down there producing and directing. There's many people involved in this film and we'll we'll get through the list uh, uh, over time in the next few shows but they were down there and many extras down there we were having a lot of fun and of course the stars of the show were down there. Christopher Fazio, David Huizinga, and Hannah Earl were down there. And we, uh, after a very long day, we got there about uh, four in the afternoon, finished up around midnight. But uh, they took the time, these three young stars took the time to talk to me and uh, share some of the insight of how they're feeling about this movie and how excited they are. So here you go. Let's go down to the Metro Room at Jack Doyle's and we'll talk to these three upcoming stars and then we'll be back to share more. All right, we're down here at uh, the Metro Room, the new Jack Doyle's uh, Pub and Grill, if you will. And uh, we're down here because there's a movie being filmed down here at the Metro Room. Skylight Films is down here doing their next film and many of the films they've already done. This one's called Good Kid, Bad Kid, uh, kind of a good cop, bad cop for uh, the younger generation, if you will. And we've got some of our main actors here. We've got Christopher Fazio here. Hello, Christopher. And David Huizinga, did I say that right? Yes. Okay. Hi. And Hannah Earl, thank you Hello. all for joining us here. I know it's been a long day for you here. Um, you're not new to the film industry, uh, especially with Skylight Films, but this is, both of you, this is your first film, is that correct? Yes. yes. All right. Now, Christopher, how did you get involved in uh, Skylight Films or film making, if you will? Well, long time ago, if I was going to guess I'd say seven years, I saw an ad in the paper about uh, a movie made by Skylight Films. I went and auditioned, and they gave me a part, and ever since I've been on and off with their movies, using whenever I'm needed. Right, so you've not your first rodeo with Skylight not Films. Not my first rodeo. And I don't mind uh, uh, saying uh, um, Rowdy Roddy Piper. You've uh, Now, I know him, Rowdy Roddy Piper, from the wrestling days. Some of my fans will know, but uh, you, you weren't sure who he was oh, when you well, met him, right? It, I, I knew he was someone important. Right. Yeah. wasn't sure who, but he was a really cool guy, nice guy really nice great guy yeah. knew he knew what he was doing he was yeah. very good at his, what he did a lot of fun yeah uh, so doing much some fun. of those movies uh and name some of the movies you've been in with skylight films already well i've been in the mystical adventures of billy owens right billy owens and the secret of the runes which was the sequel right ghost trap um let's see ricky lazio jr fbi right and now good kid bad kid yeah awesome so uh you're having a lot of fun here been a lot of fun That's it's been good. a blast Thanks, Christopher. Let's move over to David Huizinga. This is your first movie with mm -hmm. Skylight Films. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, your first movie, but you've been involved in theater before, is mm -hmm. that correct? What kind of things have you done in theater? 
Well, I do a lot of theater in churches, but I've only done one play with Nancy Keys in the Lambton Young Theater Players. Okay, so how did you come about to be in, in this film that's uh, happening here? Well, um, Mark was looking for a 12-year-old boy to be in his movie, so he asked Nancy Keys if she could recommend anyone, and she recommended me, so okay. I auditioned, and he gave me Preston. Yeah, awesome. So your character is Preston. Yes. And now this is good kid, bad kid. So are you the good kid? I guess so. So Christopher, you're the bad I, I kid. I would be the bad kid. Right. Okay. And then there's Hannah Earl here, uh, yes. and this is your first movie as well, and you yes. play the character of Kristen. Yeah. Um, what's your role here? Are you taking care of these guys? Yeah, I've basically been ordering them around, telling them what to do. Yeah. In the end, I get captured and saved. I She's the queen. Oh, okay. So you're the, you're the one they're trying to one of the ones they're trying to save here in yeah. this movie. What's the, the what's the plot here, Kristen? Can you tell us? Basically, my dad is one of the main characters, and he is really important. And he has something that something called Zeus Technologies wants, oh, okay. and they can't have. And they basically at the end they take me and hold him over his head. Well, these two are trying to save both my dad and I. Oh, so they kind of kidnap you in order to get what they want out of your dad. And yes. And then yeah. you guys got to come along and uh, try to save the save day. the yeah. day with the sister and the dad and the the spy auction. I guess is kind of mm -hmm. something that's happening, right? Okay. How are you feeling? Uh, you know, this is a, a a movie. It's a little bit different than theater. What do you think about like all the behind the scenes stuff here? Well, I think it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's, it's definitely different because when I'm in the movie, I get so many retakes. In a theater, it's so different. It's a lot. You just got to yeah. do it, right? Yeah. A lot of rehearsal, but uh, then when it comes to the point of doing it, it you just got to keep going. Yeah. Do you feel the same way, David? You've been in yes. uh, theater before. Yes. And, uh, but you, you, you don't have to talk as loud, though, do you? Because there's microphones right there and everything. Or the no, theater, you have you to talk show really up. loud because there's an audience. So, yeah, they have to hear you. Right. Now, you've all met uh, Olivier Gruner, who is uh, doing a lot of the fight scenes in here. Of course, you've probably got most of the fight scenes. How do you feel about uh, working with somebody like Olivier? Well, he is just amazingly good at what he does. It's just like, uh, if it wasn't my first rodeo, he's like been a million times by now. Yeah. He's so good at what he does. He's a master of everything martial arts. It's, um, in past movies, it would take us hours to block what we were going to do for fighting. Right. With him, it's seconds. Yeah. So smooth, so quick. So he's a good coach. Oh, he's a great coach. He knows exactly what he wants. He knows how to get it. He's good with the angles. He's all around a great professional guy. Awesome. Been a lot of fun working with him. Great. Uh, this movie's coming out, uh, what, early 2013? Is that kind of what we're That's looking what we're at? That's what we're aiming for, mm -hmm. hoping for. Yeah, yeah, it'll be available on, on DVD, of course. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing more of you guys. We're going to keep following all three of you, if, that, if that's okay, mm -hmm. yeah. as the progression of this movie. Um, Christopher, this, I mean, this is being done in Sarnia, mm -hmm. um, and, but it's also been done in different cities. And I'll say this to all of you, like, I mean, uh, you've had to do a bit of traveling, right? Mm -hmm. Mums and dads and family, how are they, are they helping you out a lot? Yeah. We really couldn't do it without our parents, right? They're, yeah. uh, they're the ones that are getting us here, they're the ones that are making sure we're ready, really the, uh, driving behind right. the work, right? Waiting around yeah. a lot and that sort of thing. And uh, what about your friends? I mean, friends your age and you're, you know, you're, you're young folks. Uh, your friends think it's kind of cool that you're in a movie or do they support you as well? They didn't believe me at first when I told No, them. they didn't? What did they say to you? They're like, no, you couldn't no, be in a movie. No, no way. Really? Yeah, yeah. Are they kind of getting it now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. They and asked I, me if Johnny Depp was in it. They asked if Johnny Depp was in it? <laughs> and if Johnny Depp was in it, what does that mean? Does that mean you're like you were extra cool or? Yeah. <laughs> and you were going to get like <laughs> autographs and stuff? <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Your friends, uh, did they... Well, uh, the first I mean, you've times, been in a few, yeah. few um, movies, right? So Friends really were excited about it before. They've kind of toned down over the years with... Uh, yeah, they still, whatever. whenever premiere time, they all get pretty excited, i got to yeah, say. But while it. it's filming, it's just same old, same old with them now. Yeah, he's just doing his Yeah, thing. still nice and supportive, though, which is nice. It's good. Right on. That's great. Well, Christopher, David, and Hannah, thank you so much for taking the time to be here on the show. We're going to keep following up with these young actors who are doing a great job. I've been here through the day with them, and it's really, really interesting to watch this movie come together. We're going to keep following up with them from time to time on the show. Uh, check out skylightfilms.ca, and then we're going to have some more information about Good Kid, Bad Kid coming to uh, DVD in 2013. Keep watching the show for more. 
Well, that was a very fun interview, and I want to say once again thank you to Christopher, David, and Hannah for sharing their time with me here on the show. I want to say a special thank you to the parents of these young children as well. You know, these uh, young children are very, very excited, very passionate about what they do. But i got to tell you, it was uh, enjoyable and interesting. Uh, I had a chance to talk to some of the parents of these young stars and just uh, how excited they are for their children. And there were some friends down there showing support as well. But kudos to you, moms and dads and family, for supporting these young actors and uh, I know it goes a long way with them so thank you all once again for sharing your time here on the show we're going to be uh, following up more with this movie uh, over the next several shows it's coming out in 2013 as we mentioned in the interview and we'll have some other interviews with people involved in this uh, up and coming show good kid bad kid if you will uh, a good cop bad cop for teens and we're excited to have been a part of it and looking forward to that coming out so congratulations to everybody involved at Skylight Films be sure to check out their website Website, uh, for all the teaser videos from some of their past videos that they've done and uh, filmed around here in Sarnia, you can see that at skylightfilms.ca. All right, we're going to take another quick break, and when we come back, we'll have somebody very special who is uh, giving us, well, his insight as to how the movie world and movie business has changed. Action legend Olivier Gruner also took the time to talk to us here on the show, and we'll have that interview. But first, take a look at this. If you like live entertainment but don't want to stay out all night, then check out Bridget's Restaurant located at the Holiday Inn Sarnia. Enjoy some great food, ice cold drinks, and every Thursday open mic from 6 to 9 p.m. and Fridays live entertainment from 7 to 10 p.m. Take the time and stop on by Bridget's Restaurant Patio located at the Holiday Inn Sarnia. All right, welcome back, and I want to thank Bridges also for uh, being one of the sponsors here on the show. Great entertainment down there every Thursday, open mic 6 to 9, and live music uh, from 7 to 10 every Friday, so check that out for sure. All right, well, coming up right now, we had uh, a very exciting interview with action legend Olivier Gruner, and uh, he was talking to us about how the movie business has changed and how it's still changing, and uh, his insight on what we need to do to... Uh, appreciate some of the movies that are coming out there in this fast-paced world. So, uh, without further ado, let's go down once again to the Metro Room and talk to action legend Olivier Gruner. All right, well, uh, we've done some interviews earlier, but now we're here again with uh, Olivier Gruner uh, here in the Metro Room at the New Jack Doyles and uh, filming a teen movie that's going to be coming out in the year 2013. We're very excited. Olivier, thank you so much. For taking the time to talk to us, uh, you're, this is pretty exciting for a lot of people here in Sarnia to have you here. But uh, you're not new to the movie scene. To, mm -hmm. to talk about a bit about your career. Well, approximately I have like 34 movies and three TV series, and I've been in business for 30 years, so it's yeah. not my first gig. But it's um, what's interesting: the movie industry evolved a lot, you know, between um, the film to digital, you know, like. Right. Um, the manpower that we used to have to make a film. I mean, now you can make a film with maybe a crew of maybe five people. But right. in the old days, there's no way you could have done it because right. you need, uh, you know, the film. It's it's, it's more complicated. You have really need a sure. real professional crew. And, to do it. and would you say that's a lot to do? I mean, you know, this is a YouTube show that uh, sure. you're on here, and I mean, you know, I produce every week, but. Um, would you say it's a lot to do with the internet and accessibility to technology that uh, has always been around but wasn't as accessible? You see where well, I'm going? You know what, you know what I'm saying? It's like it, 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 you're right. The only thing is now people are accepting the internet. I yes. think it was accept, uh, accessible, but it's just watching a movie on the internet, like you told me that like maybe like five, six years ago, I would say, no, I just want the DVD, you know, yeah. because it's not the same. And now Blockbuster is closed and Netflix is open, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So. so now you can, it doesn't bother me to watch, you know, the, uh, the movie on the iPod or just to go on the computer. We are so into computers now, so we are used to watch that screen, right. you know, smaller screen. Right. And we actually, would you agree that we watch, uh, for example, YouTube again, I'll come back to that. Sure. Um, you know, I mean, my show is about 30 minutes every week, but I, I'm pretty sure that everybody doesn't watch the whole 30 minutes, whereas on television, you, you don't have a choice but to watch the 30 minutes. Would you agree that people are watching movies differently, too? Maybe they scroll a little further past their favorite part or back and forth? And 
Absolutely. It's washed I think, differently. Yeah, it's washed differently. I think, you know, people, they need... Um, the only problem we have with that is that that's, that's not a, a positive thing. They said, the thing is, things are going so fast right now. Right. Like the information that you get, it's so fast, constantly coming at you. We have you a know? short attention span. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you're always uh, getting some commercial between or something that distracts you. So I think the problem we're having right now is like there's too much coming at you. And, and people don't have the patience just to watch a movie from the beginning to the end right. and enjoying every moment of it. Right. Remember in the old days when... Uh, uh, the DVD, actually, the, the videotape came out. Yeah. Or, even, or even going to the movie was a big thing. So yes. you go maybe once a month to a movie, and it was a special thing. It was a and treat. You, yeah, it was a treat. So you could see even uh, a movie without sound. You would be like, ah, oh, you know, this is so cool. Yeah. You know? Now there's so much evolution into the movie industry. But then again, you know, the brand... The, the kids now, they, they watch things so fast and it has to be so entertaining and so powerful in a small period of time yes. that now the movie industry is, has a hard time keeping up with the, with, with the new generation. Right. So that's why they tried to come up with the 3D, which doesn't work. You know, yeah. Obviously it fell. Uh, and the reason that we know why, <clears throat> you know, it's just the reason, I, I, mean, I can tell you the reason. I mean... A lot of people got headaches because of it. And yes. the reason why, we found out why, is when you have, it's not really 3D, it's actually four dimension. Yes. So yes. What, what we do is like, we have to focus yeah. on, on, on different things. So if you have something in the background is in, uh, is in focus, so you, gotta, you don't know if you're going to focus and watch this thing or if yeah. you want to watch the foreground. And I know what you're saying because I, you know, I've taken my children to, uh, you know, we went and saw Spider-Man 3D and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I, you know, I, I take my glasses off and I go, okay, but that's blurry, but that's not. And so I understand what you're saying. Yeah. So what do we, what do we uh, and when I say we, the, the people yeah. in the movie industry, like yourself has yeah. been around a long time, you've seen a lot of changes. And what about the, the like the Steven Spielbergs and the, you know, the big, what does the industry have to do? to adjust to the internet and, and a new way we watch a, a, a television sitcom or a television movie. What do we got to do to keep, keep it, it going? I, and you know, that's a great question. I mean, you know the thing? I think uh, uh, they're going to have a problem with it on. Because, yeah. you know, if you look at the action picture uh, uh, right now, um, it doesn't matter if the expandables or if it's, uh, it's a Spider-Man. It just, just, they have to keep up with the action. Right. But the action gets boring when you have too much coming at you. How much yeah. can you take? I mean, yeah. you're like, okay, how many kicks can I How much people can they shoot? You know, how many people? Yeah, you know, that's you right. Know. You know, so you get a little bang, bit bored. Yeah, yeah. So I think now, and that's great for the independent, it's about the story, it's about the character. Yeah. And I think we have to focus more about the character and the story itself. Right. And then from there, people, you know, when you, when you cry when you watch a movie, Right. You know that's a good movie. That's real. And it's, it's real. It's and then, yeah, yes. it's affected. The problem with the new generation, like I was saying, things are so fast. Are they willing just to wait to be attached to the character for half an hour and yeah. see what happens to the character affect them at the end of the film? Well, and, and impress me. Yeah. You know, yeah. like, I mean, uh, I mean, we could go... Uh, we go back to the original Flash Gordon days when the spaceship was flying. You could see the wires, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but but that was okay because way back then, right? I mean, yeah. that was new. And then and then you know we go to Close Encounters of the Third Kind, mm -hmm. and we see the you know all of that. And now we go uh, modern day, uh, even before the three D or forty, if you will, uh -huh. all that stuff. We go. Yeah, okay, that's cool, and that was impressive, and you know, we, we can go back to Twister, if you remember, you uh -huh. know, that was incredible. Yeah. You had to Amazing. watch it at the theater, Yep. but then now I can watch it at home. So, impress me has got to be... Yeah. I think they're so struggling. I think, I, th so. I think they're struggling. I think they don't know where to go. The 3D was a big thing for me, for them. They, yeah. they really spent a lot of money. But very quickly. Yeah, very it's, quickly. It's, but they spent know. tons of money. They promote the heck out of it. Yeah. I mean, that was 3D, 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 3D. Now, you go to the theater before everything was 3D. Now, it's like maybe one or two films are 3D. Right. And the rest are 2D. Right. I think it's... it's it. So now, what's the next thing for the, for the entertainment? And, and how many... Like, we shoot with a red camera, right? Right. So the red camera is like a 4K, 5K for the Epic. And then we're going to go to 6K now. Yeah. <laughs> now, how, how clear do you want the... the, the 
the uh, the picture to be. Just right. think about it. What you want to really uh, do is uh, uh, be in a theater and, and, and bring the public into the story. Right. 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 That, that's the point. That's well, why I mean, you, you want to leave the adventure. Would, right? would it be safe to say that, uh, I mean, we go 3D television and everything and sports and high def. Uh, I could be watching the, the Super Bowl as a hologram in my living room. Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but what, what about, uh, and we, we're going to wrap this up soon, yeah. I know, but uh, what about marketing? I mean, you know, you talk about the internet and, and promoting and that, everything out there, but when it comes to marketing, of course, Facebook, I don't know if you've heard of that, yeah. but, you know, <laughs> What's that? It, it's all out there in the Twitter thing, but there's a, there's a different way of doing a movie or a, or a 30 minute segment, but there's also a different way of marketing. And, to get the attention, how do you see that affecting it? Well, I, uh, yeah, yeah. Now to get to the public, the the, the well, let's go back first. Uh, uh, I think the movie uh, uh, to promote a movie, you have different ways of doing it now. Before there was only one way. There's magazines, and right. you have promo on TV and interviews. Yeah, and interviews the, like we're doing right now. Your face kind of thing, yeah. Now you have YouTube, you have uh, Facebook, you have Twitter. You got all the kind of the different options to get to the public. Right. You know. But the good thing is, it's a good and bad, okay? The good thing is, if you have a film and you want to sell it, you can go straight to the consumer. Right. Before you had to go to a distributor. But, and the distributor right. will decide where it goes. Cut in the middle, man. Yeah, right? exactly. So right. now we cut the middle, man, who goes straight to the consumer. Now, how do we get to the consumer for him just to understand, hey, we have a film that you should watch because it's a really cool film. Right. So this is where the trick is. Now the money is going to go into, I think, those uh, uh, to promote the, the different film. Po exactly. different, different, different pockets. Different. Yeah, right. exactly. So it's, it's, uh, the industry is, is changing. You know, it, it, I think it's going to be better for the independent, to be yeah. honest with you. Uh, because every time you do a film on the, in the independent world, you have more freedom. Right. You know, when it's a studio, everything has to be, you know, there's a bunch of executives. Well, it's the same for the know. music industry. Yeah, everything. exactly. I mean, it's yeah. more direct. It's more yeah. accessible, accessible to get it in there, right? Yeah. And you spend less money and, and, and of course, you know, sure. money is not wasted. It just goes straight to the screen. But it's just, uh, it just, you know, the world is changing so fast. And, and, and it's, uh, the, the problem that I have with this uh, world is, is too fast. Yeah. And the brain can't handle seven It can speed. only take so much. Yeah. You know, so much. So, well, you know, you could even say, uh, a friend of mine said to me years ago, said, you know, when, when drive throughs like a McDonald's drive through if you went through and, and there was 10 people in line, that was okay. Now you go to a drive through if there's one car in front of you, it's too slow. Yeah, no, you're right. Because cause we're, we're, we're moving so fast. So we're fast. in a big hurry. Exactly. Yeah. So the speed is going to be a problem, you know, in our the next uh, generation. Right. And we're going to have to slow it down before yeah. th something is going to break. I mean, you can't go like fast. You got to come fast. back a little bit. Yeah, come back and just pull back and just say, hey, you know what? Uh, uh, one example: the difference between driving your car from, uh, let's say, a, a few kilometers, right? You drive your car, you can't see what's going on on the road. Now, if you walk that two kilometers. You're gonna to start to see things that you didn't see before. Well, as long as I'm not looking face down. Yeah, you're you right. You got a point there. You got a good <laughs> right, point. Right, right. No, if you don't, I hear what you're saying. But you know, slow down and take a look so around. So now you can see things that you haven't seen. Like, oh, there is like a little butterfly. Oh, there, there is like something going on in yeah. that world. But you. we go so fast that slow we don't down. see that world. Well, you know, I could relate that to. Uh, have you ever seen the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Sure, sure, sure. What sure, does sure. he say? He says, "Slow down and look around, because if you don't." You just might miss something. Exactly. Well, that's that's the whole point. That right. You're different, right? That's right. So I think the speed is going to be a problem in the future. But right. but then again, you know. Uh, 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 and you're going to continue to be a part of all this and helping make this happen, slow things down, and uh, give us some more attention <sighs> to. Uh, uh, well, I I I I'm not going to change the world because I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it. You know, I tried when I was. One young. man can make a difference. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I tried. You know, when you're young, you said, "I'm going to change the world. Of I'm going to do it." Yeah. And then you get beat up. You said, "Okay, I'm not going to do it." I'm going to change me, <laughs> but I can't change the world. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Olivier Gruner, thank you so <laughs> thank much. You. I know it's been a long day for you here, oh, but right. thank you so much for your thank time. You. <laughs> Olivier Gruner here uh, with a great perspective here on uh, what's going to be happening in the movie industry. And uh, we're going to plan to stay in touch with Olivier and follow his career as well. 
uh, keep watching the show for more because uh, we've got more exciting things coming up. All right, welcome back one final time. And I want to say a special thank you to Olivier Gruner for that interview. We had a lot of fun talking to Olivier. In fact, off camera, we chatted some more and had a lot of fun. And I was given the opportunity to drive Olivier back to his hotel room. And we had some fun and laughs along the way. So Olivier Gruner, thank you so much once again for taking the time to talk to us here on the show. If you want to find out more about Olivier, well, simply Google it. You'll find all kinds of information about Olivier, his movies, and many of the things that he's doing. So thank you once again, Olivier. All right, we're going to wrap up the show. But before we do just a few events i want to share with you coming up sunday this labor day weekend the pre-labor day bash happening down at the lazy duck get there early drinks are only gonna be two dollars up until midnight and all the way down from london ontario dj double down will be there to spin the tunes for you so get down there and have some fun and celebration and celebrate uh, well i don't know celebrate but the summer's over right so get down there and celebrate it however you're going to celebrate down at the lazy duck this Sunday, September the 2nd. Also, coming up next week, of course, First Friday is happening downtown, and we invite you to get down there, support your local businesses, your local musicians, and, of course, always stop by Cheeky Monkey. Say hello to Marianne and Roland. And a special shout-out to Jordan Walters, who's going to be down at the Ross Cemetery on 148 Front Street, and uh, should be a website on the screen there for you to check that out. He's going to be doing some painting and some music, and get down there and say hello to Jordan Walters, at Ross Cemetery. Okay, one more thing I want to announce just before we go. I'm very, very excited. Uh, Petrolia Hard Oiler Sports Bar and Grill has invited me to do karaoke out there every Thursday night beginning September the 6th. I will be out there about 9 o'clock starting the karaoke. So if you live out that way and you know me or even if you don't know me, stop out that way and say hello to me and we'll have some fun with the karaoke and maybe make the trip out there and say hello to me as well. We're going to have a lot of fun at the Sports Bar and Grill, the Hard Oiler out in Petrolia starting Thursday, September the 6th. All right, I think that's about all the time I got for you. Don't forget, if you want to be on the show, send me an email to the show at davidburrows.ws. Keep watching the credits. You never know what's going to show up there. Have a great week and an even better weekend, a long weekend, and we'll see you next time right here on the show. Bye for now.